I don't want to, this to be a freaking disaster, you know, like last time, setting up the hooks, feeling the weight, getting the setup all freaking, you know, juicy. So I did that ahead of time. You know, juicy. Frick. Oh, sorry, boys. <laughs> Shut your ass up, stick Del Hagen. There's always something, fellas. So anyways, I changed the setup a little bit and I'm glad I did because um, I have these, these crash pads now for the, the weight releasers. When I was stripping the weight to add more weight on, the freaking bar flipped and the releaser fell. And it was, fellas, it was inches from smashing that $1,000 plus mirror, okay? Look at the size of this beautiful mirror. Can you imagine this barbell would have crushed destroyed this huge mirror. It would have been absolutely devastating. So, uh, no leotards today. Instead, I'm wearing this uh, Russian, they have no idea what it says. The guy that grabbed me at the gym, taught me kettlebells and behind the back deadlift and stuff, gave me this shirt. I don't know, it was Russian. Third open bench press tournament in Chicago for the Russian mafia, I suppose. I have no idea. This is the Russian community in, in Chicago. Anyways, fellas, I figured I would start this sucker here, this stream, with, uh, fellas, we got 315 plus the uh, 45s. We got about 405, 405, if you wanna be a geek, 407. 407 total on the bar at the top. The centric control down, explode with the 315. Now I'll tell you fellas, I'm feeling a little lethargic. I say this every day, it's hard to muster up the energy to really attack it and get after this son bitch. But uh, I'm gonna do my damnedest fellas because I figure now that I'm uh, got the stream going, I got the boys, got the eyes on me, I can go freaking nuts, okay? That's what it's all about fellas. Let's see if you can help me go freaking nuts here and smash a weight bigger than last time, all right? Just trying to go freaking nuts. It's hard. So I got, uh, before I go nuts, I'm gonna suck down another tablespoon of Folgers crystals, okay? Ah, just extremely dehydrated. Piss is gold. Piss and gold, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready to lose my freaking mind though, boys. I think you're gonna help me do this today. This guy, Kent Eldred. I can't read the comment. Look at it. The comments are all stacked and jacked like they were yesterday in the car. Thank God I got the old trusty freaking tablet here because I can't read the comments. But I see that. I see it, Kent. Five freaking bucks. That's a freaking hundred servings of Folgers crystals right there for five bucks. He says, stay on the tack, stick. Get jacked and freaking stacked, stick. Get succulent gains. Get bulbous, but dense. Thank you, thank you, sir. I'm just, fellas, I'm gonna freaking, I'm either gonna die or I'm gonna just erupt with intensity. It's hard to tell, you never know. Sometimes you feel lethargic and you have the best day of your life. You can't go off of your freaking feelings. Fellas, let me tell you something real fast. So if you missed it yesterday, I talked about it. I talked about it yesterday. Some freaking Horse cock tune, Pantera, 1980s Pantera, proud to be loud, killed my stream, okay? That whole album, that power metal album is somehow copyright free, royalty free tunes, but that freaking song, boys, somehow that freaking song flagged all the, you know, the freaking YouTube police. So I said, you know what? I'm not making you money. Screw you. I'm taking it down. All right, fellas. I'm going to go back to right on the edge because I'm feeling about right on the freaking edge here. I got a lot to talk about, boys. Okay? I got a lot to talk about. That's why I can't kill my intensity right now. But I've been in this garage for two hours. I'll explain. Let's get freaking nuts. God dang. Just crank the goddamn tunes. You got 405 at the top. 315 out of the freaking hole. Oh. 
Let's fucking go, boys. That's badass. That's a freaking groove right there. To move Tormentor a Christian soul, it's not like that. Can't you see? I am right on the earth! doesn't help when I'm doing this in a slanted garage. If I flip that sucker, maybe it'd work better. All I know is when I start horse cocking some weights, if one side releases before the other, you know, we're getting freaking tweaky, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like tweaking, freaking tweaking the deltoid. Tweak, look at that. Look at this shit. Look at this. Solid. Look at that plate. Look at that. How, does, how the frick did this happen? Right here, it's, it's tight. You know what I'm saying? I think the garage is slanted, boys. We'll keep a work with it, though. We'll see.
300 servings of Folgers crystals right now with these super chats. But he's saying quite kindly, kindly, kindly requesting the Mubor gear, tormentor of Christian souls. Don't even think about it. Get under the bar and get it. Listen, fellas, that was my high school. You know what I'm saying? The Demua. The freaking, you know, my <laughs> high school, we were in the high school battle of the bands, and our band name, we actually just call ourselves the Muborgese. Okay? The Moobor Geezy, just plain obscure shit that the fellow teen high school kids had no idea, you know what I'm talking about? We didn't play Tormentor of Christian Souls, but we did play was uh, In Death's Embrace, you know that song? Fellas, I don't know, like, I want your opinion here. If I play, can I just get your opinion real fast, fellas? Can I just ask that of you? Is that too much to ask, fellas? Let me see if this chat's working. Is it too much to ask if I get your opinion? Okay? Can you fucking answer the question, boys? Is it too much to ask? Fellas, I'm not seeing ask away. Okay, finally. I mean, fellas, listen, I'm trying to get some answers here. Um, can I freaking, if I play copyrighted music, does, this, does that silence and shut down my stream? Because I've kind of read that sometimes it does. Now I'm assuming that that's if you play like fucking Aerosmith and Eminem. You know what I'm saying? Someone's saying it will. Not at all. It depends. Don't play the copyrights. Stop playing with the tablet and go work out. You'll go to jail. God damn. Sometimes. Someone's saying Blue Oyster Cult. I feel like that's going to send me to jail if I play that. Damn it, fellas. I don't know. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of yes. Gibbons, three freaking 15 po English pounds. Thank you for the vids. A feller and a half. Thank you, brother. That's a freaking Folgers Instant Crystals right there. Get my own, get my own to play it. Just send it anyways, F YouTube. Well, fellas, I mean, I, yeah, we say F YouTube, but then at the same time, if they shut my channel down, that's F Sticky Ricky, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, I don't mind the glam terror, fellas. What I'm trying to say is, I was thinking about this, the you know, freaking hour I was setting up all this shit. It's like, I don't, can't listen to the same stuff. <laughs> Some filthy Kevin McLeod. You know what, Kevin's actually, you, kept, you know, listen, if you can get psyched up to Kevin, you're okay in my book. We'll just stick with it. Kevin's proven, you know what I'm saying? I love to jam out, boys, but we're gonna go a different route, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna go. That's not bad. That's actually not bad. I'm not gonna lie. It just makes you wanna move, you know what I'm saying?
it's not bad, boys. I'll take this any day. Very easy to get lost in this music, you know? That's not bad. Uh, we got 365 plus 46, 46 each side. We're looking at 455 here at Nerd, we're looking at 457 at the top. 365 on the bottom. My mother-in-law dropped over 74 pounds with this new weight loss method that she's been doing. Jesus Christ! It may seem a bit odd, but this easy morning ritual works so well that it's helped her drop up to 11 kind of pounds week this. after week. 11 pounds each week. quite a buzz among our friends and family. Huge buzz! they shared buzz. her transformation on multiple news outlets, including NBC, Fox, Putting and cinnamon ABC. On she ice started cubes. doing it around April, and she looks absolutely stunning and is happy to be able to keep up with her grandchildren. Say his mom is stunning. Good God! You're fucking stunning! Yes, mama! You're doing it! You're stunning!
right, here we go, folks. This music, I mean, listen, Kevin's good, but holy shit, he he's shines in the royalty-free disco, because that other shit, I don't know what the frick that was. Holy buckets. Whew, okay. Okay. If you get copyrighted and demonetized, You'll have to get a depressing, suicidal nine to five, and we lose out on the horse pump sessions and the sick dance skills. That's true, boys. If I lose this channel, I lose everything, okay? And sometimes it's worth pushing to the limits, okay? Cool Keith, best friends imaginable, hang with Kevin and Stick Del Hagen. That's not a bad, that's not a bad trio of friends right there, you know? Listen, it's time to get serious, though, boys. I mean, we're going to move some horse cock weights, okay? That's $4.95 at the top, and unracking that sucker is freaking, because the shit's kind of, it's not totally stable, you know? That's why every time I unrack it, it's like, holy buckets! And he kind of just like, holy frick! And as you go, and as that shit drops off, like, oh! You know, you freaking explode sumo wrestler power blast. Oh. I think I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take my time, boy. You know, let's, let's throw a ten out. Let's go. Let's throw a ten around. Going twenty total pound increase. Okay. That's putting this shit to five hundred and seventeen pounds at the top, boys. That's a big load. Okay. And we'll see what happens. Did you guys think that Kevin McLeod could ever be so bad with that one song? It just, you know, it has a decent, it has a decent start. I mean, it just didn't go anywhere, you know? He didn't just lose his shit. That's what I was thinking was going to happen. Kevin on vocals, you know? Because we all know him as a mastermind of, like, the instrumentals, but can you imagine if on one song, it was just him just losing his mind on vocals? And I don't know what to do. Shut the fuck up, get it up! It's like, good God, Kevin. Holy shit, this guy's a lunatic. You know? That's what I was hoping for. I mean, maybe we should, listen, I'm gonna go back to it again. We'll see. We'll see. We'll give it another chance. Maybe he does push shit at the end. Let's 
see your other kids. This is all Kevin McLeod. Kevin? Kevin! I don't know, I'm pretty sure his other music sucks. I'm not gonna lie. I've, I think I've tried to find another shit before because his, 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 you know, his disco is like untouchable out of this world. So I'm pretty sure out of my four years of just cranking that the fuck up, I've looked for other Kevin because that other that stuff's so good, you know? But I'm pretty sure he just sucks. He just sucks with everything else he does. He just hit gold somehow with, uh, holy buckets. He hit gold somehow with the frickin' disco. You know what I mean? That guy, <laughs> Because everything else he does is awful. What is it called? It calls, uh, let's see. This is his greatest hit, in my opinion. He's got some good shit, but this is his greatest hit. And of course, I'm saving it for losing my mind on this 517 up top bench press. Let's fucking horse cock this shit, fellas. Let's go. Lose your mind, boys. Let's go. And I don't know what to do. Teenage angst. Is that how you pronounce it? Angst. Oh. Teenage is scared, the living shit out of me. Woo! You know what I'm talking about? That's high school right there, boys. That's high school. I swear to God, I'm not okay. I'm not. Go, baby. Lose your mind. Woo! Get some more of that Folgers in me, you know? Come on, you son of a bitch! Pizza. Get it delivered with a zero dollar delivery fee. Gotta have a wild one. <sighs> Look at the plates. Look at that. Those ones are all right, you know what I'm saying? It's uneven, Steven! What are 
those wavelengths of the ball. And who sells that? William Blinsky. I can't see the last name, but uh, they're from Titan Fitness. They're just weight releasers. Whoo! Cloaca is saying, get the goddamn headphones, Ricky. You can't max out to Kevin. But you're wrong, I actually can. You can max out to anything. The secret to maxing out to shit is you just gotta know when the track loses its mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, when's that breakdown coming up? You know? And with the Kevin, it's, you know, it's got the good group. But that's not losing its mind yet. It's why it goes into the double time. You know what I'm saying? And it kind of has a build up where it's like, I'll show you. Where it's just like, just one guy fucking carrying the tempo and the band comes back and they bring it back. Let's see. I'll show you. I'll show you where it is. I think it's, I think that's where I maxed out on it. Let's see. Come on, where you at? You'll see, here we go. It's coming. This is where you psych yourself the fuck up. Get the chalk on the hands. Get all the weights. Here we go. One guy, carry the fucking rhythm. One guy. Now the rest of the band, come on, bring it back. Let's go! You know what I'm Feel that? That's where it is. That's the energy. Woo! All right, boys. I think I'm gonna try to horse cock some more weight here. It's just tricky with this because the, so the floor is slanted, so I feel like one side is hitting before the other. It's really throwing me off. But still, it's not like too difficult, so. Let's, let's see. I think we'll put another 10 on. Ooh, yeah, that's it. All right, so this is gonna make it 445 pounds on the bar, 537 pounds on the top of the eccentrics, okay? 537, motherfuckers. Holy butts. All right, boys. This is already 40 pounds more than we did the other day. Every time you watch me, you can expect me to give you a little bit more testicular fortitude, you know what I'm saying? A little bit bigger explosion, you know what I'm saying? More volume, you know what I'm saying? Big, explosive, volume loads. Loads with explosiveness and volume. Increased volume. Whew. But that bam 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 yeah. Holy buckets. Holy buckets, brothers. Brothers, I'm calling from the Valley of the Kings with nothing to atone. Stephen Narvaez with a two dollar cup of crystals from the stick to fuel these workouts. I felt, remember I told you I was feeling a little lethargic? This is what it's all about. You know, you get the freaking tunes cranking. You get freaking uh, 
487 eyeballs. That's not that, oh shit, it's freaking, it's almost a thousand eyeballs, fellas. I get that wrong every time. Okay, but just listen. It's not about the volume of people in here. You know what I'm talking about? It's the freaking, the testicular volume. Explosive loads. That's what it's about. Holy buckets, fellas. I almost want another couple of Folgers crystals. I don't know, man. I'm kind of be losing my mind, though. I think my kid's home right now, too. She's going to be worried about Papa. Papa, no! As I'm getting smothered by 547 pounds. We'll see, though. Whoo! What do you want to listen to? Can't you see that I rise from the edge? I think we'll listen to that one again. I'm going to lose my mind. Let's do it, boys. I was going to, you know, get a cup of water, maybe get a cup of instant crystals, but I think I'll just crush this weight first. What do you say? And then, after we do this, how about we hit a little bit more weight? Also, on these recommendations, it's pretty funny because we have all this Glamterra. And then we have the lone wolf of the macho man by the village people, okay? Now, I once said the village people are the quintessential symbol of heterosexuality. You have the masculine man with the mustache and the chest hair. You have the, the grizzled, tough sailor, the, the uh, chief uh, Native American warrior, all just alpha males. That's pretty badass in my book. Hey, hey, yes, I'm macho, macho man. I've got to be a macho man. You know what I'm saying? Don't get it twisted. My eyeballs are on fire. Let's go stick. We got some big freaking horse cock weight right now. This is weight that can kill an average human. 537 pounds up top. This is pectoralis ripping weight.
I gotta figure it out because uh, that felt uneven, Steven. You know what I'm saying? That felt uneven. It's like slow, controlled releases, and it's just like helicopter press. So I think maybe going back to the bumpers on the bottom, something to keep it even. Because holy buckets! Like look at this every time. This is the freaking proof in the pudding every time. The plates just freaking, you know, get this nice gap. You know what I'm saying? Look at that separation, boys. That's the uh, dangers of lifting in the garage in a hill, a slanted hill. But you know, it doesn't kill you, make you tougher. What I gotta do next time is just turn the bench around, press the other way, right? So that the slant is the left side down, and right side up. There might be some theory behind that in terms of, uh, some theory behind that in terms of freaking dominant, you know what I'm saying? Like, think about if I'm squatting and my right leg has to work harder than my left, right? It's like freaking unilateral bilateral training. You know what I'm saying? Maybe there's something to that. Whew. Maybe the best gains we made are in the garage. Okay, fellas. I don't know if I should carry on with benching, do some volume, or do some dips, right? I think I'm gonna do dips though. And I think dips will be good to do. My biggest quarrel with dips is putting weight on. It's always a pain in the ass. But I got all these dumbbells here that I can just throw on the dip belt. And I also have 240 pounds of chains. So I can just keep draping the chains through the dip belt. You know what I'm saying? There might be something to that as well. It might be a, you know, we're just gonna get crazy here, boys. It's getting musty in here. You can see on the camera lines, it's getting humid, hot, and sweaty. Energy's up. Folgers crystals are being metabolized as we speak. Whew. Feeling much, much better than I felt um, when I turned this stream on. 521 people in here right now. We're kicking ass, boys. The music has stayed royalty free. YouTube will not shut me down. You know what I'm saying? They can't censor my ass. They can try delicious dicks, daily delights. They can try to censor that. But I'm gonna keep coming back. Keep coming harder than ever, you know what I'm saying? So we, <clears throat> it's amazing how the energy dies when the tunes are off. My whole life I have been right on the edge. I'm cooked, boys. I'm pretty cooked already. This heavy uh, eccentric bench is pretty good. <clears throat> I guess I'll take the let's take the hooks off now. Let's see what let's see how this feels after that. That was kind of a I mean five five forty or four forty five, so five thirty-seven. We'll take that off the top. Let's see how this kind of things where we get back to it. I ordered a Marcus Rule three foot long poster. Still have yet to get it. Not sure how the quality is going to be. It's from one of those independent, uh, you know, small fucking red bubble bullshit or something like that, where they might just mail me like a extremely blurry pixelated uh, sheath. You know what I'm saying? Like a super Nintendo quality Marcus Rule picture. I hope it's like these ones. This is pretty good quality. Nice, like, you know, vinyl material as well. Uh, something else I want to talk about real fast, but let, maybe we should get back to our pressing. But uh, I'm a huge uh, advocate now of back extensions, and I'll get into that, and I'll talk about, talk about why that is. Okay, look at the sweat accumulating on the 
Russian bench mafia shirt. Okay. We're about ready to, by the way, I am, I don't know if, if it truly is a mafia. I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't, I'm not saying it's the mafia. Just FYI. No need to get uh, decapitated or anything. I'm just saying. I don't know what it is. It's probably just a, you know, a loving community in Chicago. My whole life I have been right on the edge. I'm going crazy. Can't you see that I am right on the edge? You're fucking driving me insane. Let's freaking, let's go. Let's horse cock some shit. Oh, fellas, uh, some of you guys asked me today, what about Juju Mufu? Are you going to collab with him? So he actually texted me yesterday. He's apparently going to be in town for the Olympia. So he asked if we want to get dirty and nasty and crazy. I said, listen here, bro. Listen here. What the hell is this, bro? Listen here, Cinderella. Yeah, you bet your ass. Meet me at the horse's stable. I'll make you go insane. All right? I got Kevin McLeod. I got weight releases. I got chains. I got, you know, 1,637 eyeballs on me. How does that sound? Lose your mind, right? I got royalty free. I got cat piss. I got Folgers crystals. By the way, somebody asked me and said, hey, Sticky Ricky, why don't you mat your gym floor? And I said, listen, my cat loves pissing on rubber mats. I don't know what it is, but it's very tempting for the feline species. And sure enough, I had a rubber mat in here the other day. Just, I had two of them, just two of them. And sure enough, it was pissed on. So that's the, that's the question. That cat loves pissing on things that cost a lot of money. You know, gym flooring, it's not cheap, right? Plates, iron plates, not that cheap. Pisses on all of it. A litter box full of fresh, delicious litter. Zero piss. You know what I'm talking about? That's that cat's sense of humor. Can't you see that I am right on the edge? Let's get the tunes going. Let's get nasty. Oh, yeah. I'm going crazy. My whole life I have been. <laughs> Woo! All right, fellas. The, the energy just, you know, evaporates when the tunes are off. So what do we want to play? Some Kevin? Let's play some heavy metal rules. I think this is certified royalty free. Heavy metal rules. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come on. Rain. Bulldogs and noodles. Thank you, my man. Tacos to the chateau. Please get somebody some. If I get a copy of the Yeah. 
Could have done better on that 405. Five reps is, you know, I hit five reps when I did into the 537 pound eccentric. So I don't know if that cooked me or if I'm just a, a beta cuck, you know? I think we're gonna do some dips now, fellas. How does that sound? Look at everyone's bailing right now. They're like, a little separation. Separation! Hey, by the way, let me ask you guys a question here. Let's get personal for a second, shall we? So I ran into uh, Lane Norton at uh, the gym yesterday. I was doing some leg press, and I was like, who the frick is that guy? That guy looks kind of familiar. And it hit me like a ton of freaking bricks. It was Jason Blaha's arch nemesis, Lane Norton. So... You know, I was like, whatever. And then I'm doing some, you know, donkey calf raises. And he's like standing right next to me. He's kind of, you know, fish eyeing me and I'm fish eyeing him. So I'm like, you freaking Lane Norton? He's like, yeah, I get that a lot. So I'm like, all right, listen here, brother. So I'm just shooting the shit with him, you know, telling him about my life, asking him about his life, you know. I'm no fanboy, you know, cock like that. But whatever. So listen, I'm, I've learned my lessons. Like you meet a lot of people, you should just document, you should get pictures of people and stuff. Cause I've met other people. I met, uh, who was that way more famous doctor? Hubberman. I met Andrew Hubberman uh, at Gold's Gym in, in Venice. And uh, one guy was, oh my God, can I get a picture with you? And I was, I was like, oh, whatever, bro. Let me, get a, let me get a picture too. So I just dwarfed his ass with a lat spread. And uh, I had the picture on my phone, and um, I just, I hate having stored stuff on my phone. So I was going through it, and I was like, ah, screw it, I'll just delete this. And I was like, why did I delete that picture? You know what I mean? If you met Arnold Schwarzenegger and stuff, would you delete a picture with Arnold Schwarzenegger? So I just, I don't know, I've, I've kind of learned I need to document more of my life. You know what I'm saying? Well, anyways, I'm not a science geek, so I never like obviously follow Lane Norton's studies and stuff. I just know of him mainly for Jason Blaha drama back in 2015 or 2016 or whatever that was. Anyways, you know, I, make, I post, make a post of it. I follow him or whatever on Instagram stuff. Okay. The guy doesn't like the post, first of all. I tag him, 
No, no like from him. No follow back. I mean, is what is this? Is this just because he's too big time, or is he a real cocksucker? Okay, I just want to know. Genuine opinion. Well, how would you guys feel about that? I mean, I don't really care personally, but my wife, oh, what an asshole. Which, I, I mean, listen, I get it. Sometimes, fellas, you know, you get so many followers or whatever, it's impossible to see all the action and engagement. But I feel like when you talk to someone personally, like I talked to him for like 10 minutes, you know what I'm talking about? And I was like, oh, I'll up this. I'll, I'll tag you, brother. He's like, oh, okay. And then not to, uh, not to, you know, any comment or anything, not giving it like, a, hey, nice meeting you or something. If someone took a picture of me and tagged me and all that, I would freaking like it. I'd say, hell yeah, brother, you know what I mean? Like, all that kind of shit. But what do you guys think? Let's read the chat. Interested in Olympic flag football? Probably just a douche. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyways, best tubular support brand. Uh, I don't know, brother. I just used whatever was at the medical facility that I was training out of. Anyways, blah. It's <laughs> blah. Probs didn't see it. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Who cares about follow back? I don't care, brother. I'm just asking an opinion. I think we're having a personal chat right now, you know what I'm saying? You know, am I not supposed to talk to you guys? I gotta talk to anyone else? Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, okay. If I wanna be streaming every single day, you bet your buns I'm gonna bring up bullshit like that. Anyways, let's like this. Uh, so this Haas, the dope smoker sleep, one hour long, slow metal song. It sounds way too long, bro. And if it's slow and it's an hour long, I don't think I want anything to do with that. Give me fast. Give me fast. Give me three and a half minutes. That's the perfect song. Any Rick the Stick merch? Oh, brother, I got some stuff in the I got some stuff in the works. Okay, I uh, you know I have a great mind, right? Incredible imagination. So I've made a couple creatures, doodled that. Made some doodles. Okay, I could just do the doodles, but I I figure let's have a real expert artist kind of. You know, let's make, let's put the professionalism in the sticky Ricky doodles. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm in the process of that. Panels. Wow. Five. 99. English euros or European euros. Or is it, yeah, I think that's euros. He says, Hey man, do you think someone can bulk? Someone can keep making gains without bulking once they're at a high enough body. Can keep making gains without bulking once they're at a high enough body fat. I don't think that makes any sense. Just because you have fat doesn't mean you're going to make more gains. I think you're going to make the gains from the consumption of more calories. So if you're already at a high body fat and you're trying to make more gains, consuming, like if you're not consuming more calories, like you're just going to keep the fat. You know what I'm saying? Either you're going to maintain... You should strip some of the fat if you're in a deficit or if you're in a surplus, you're just going to add more fat. So I don't think that's, I think you should strip the fat. You should try to get to like, try to get to like 12 or 13%, then go on a freaking mega bulk and get back up to 18% where you're putting on that equal amount of fat and muscle. You know what I'm saying? That's what I would do. Oh man, this is from Peaceful, Peaceful Hermit, a Peaceful Hermit. 20 smackaroos, holy buckets. He says, uh, you ever look at knees over toes, guy? Well, I get this question a lot, don't I? The exercises turned my knees into balls of walls, balls to the walls, sleek metallic terminator joints. Well, that sounds pretty badass. But what are the, I mean, isn't it just about deep knee bend, knees over toes and all that kind of stuff? Like the split squat, the deep Freaking hammies to calves, split squats and ass to grass, heels elevated squats and sled pushes and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like I, I've looked into it from time. I, mean, I haven't really looked into it. I've seen it from time to time. But uh, I mean, even just the name in general suggests just the knees over to. And then also, what he's a big anterior tibialis, uh, you know, anterior tibialis guy. Is that like his thing, right? Anyways, let's kind of get back to the workout here. This Slauson says, yeah, pretty much. Wow, boss hoss says my mom is stunning. She's lost 11 pounds every week and I can't take my eyes off of her. What, a, what an amazing ad that was. This guy's mom lost 44 pounds and he's just enamored with her now. An absolutely gorgeous, stunning mother. 
incestual thoughts. Okay, let's get back to it, fellas. Um, what are we thinking? Let's go some dips. I was gonna say, should I horse cock some, you know, 225 for as many reps as possible? But I, I kind of don't really see the point in doing that. I used to do that a lot in the past. I think drop sets are badass, but I think doing like 225 for as many reps as possible, like, I don't know. You're just asking to get a tweak, basically. You're getting a tweak, and there's just no benefit in terms of strength. Because I've done it at times where I was specializing in the bench, trying to get, I was getting stronger every, every you know, week. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to start trying to, you know, like a combine deal. Let's see how many reps I can get. And I was training, and then I just ended up just messing my shoulder up. So those super high rep stuff, like when you're getting the, you know, 30s, the 30 rep range, it's just like, what are you even doing? What's that? 30 reps. Just put another freaking plate on each side. Get to the 10 to 20s rep range. I think that's where the money is. You know what I mean? Personally, I think the money's in the, the five reps, you know? So I hit that 405 for five. Not my best. Definitely not my worst. I feel like I had more. I, was, I wanted to get like eight in my head. But I was like, you know, I'm horse cocked the freaking 537 pound, you know, eccentric. So maybe that taxed me a tad. But the, the set of five, like, that's money. That's freaking, you're going to get some hypertrophy. You're going to get incredible Hulk strength gains. Okay? And of course, singles are badass. You know, I'll always, I'll always be a fan of doing singles, right? Because those singles just get you strong as shit. I don't care what anyone says. Oh, singles? You get nothing out of doing one rep. Bullshit. Fucking... Mustering up the strength of your whole CNS, firing up adrenaline, freaking norepinephrine, cranking through your veins for one rep, just horse cocking, everything's as tight as a freaking Titanic ship as it's going 10,000 leagues under the sea, compressing. You tell me that's not gonna make you strong? Okay, uh, where am I gonna do these dips at? Schnikes. Man, this setup, fellas, is not optimal. Look, because right here, I would put it right here, but there's no space because of the dumbbells. I could put it right there, but then I gotta strip all my weight. And then the same thing, I could put it right here, but I gotta move all that crap. And then I gotta strip all the weight. So I had a really nice uh, dip station, really freaking heavy duty thing was made out of an Abrams tank, literally. Not really, you know what I mean? But you get what I'm saying? Like just hard freaking core, thick and voluptuously rotund and Dense, you know what I'm talking about? I've horse cocked um, 300 pounds strapped to me for like a ne terrible negative, you know what I mean? And that thing didn't even, didn't swivel, didn't bend, nothing. You know, freak, freak dip station. <sighs> Shnikes. What if I put it, you guys gotta bear with me here. But look, also here, I got a setup here for this crappy Titan back extension. Somebody asked me about it, I said, hey, Sticky Rick, you got the Titan back extension? I said, yeah, it's a piece of shit, okay? But I found a way to make it good, okay? Check this out real fast. And listen, guys, you know, when you tune into the streams, it ain't gonna all be about horse cock and weights. You know, it's gonna be about ingenuity, brilliance. You know what I mean? Exercise, ingenuity, and, you know? Check this out here. Okay, I got a couple tidbits I'm gonna show you. So first and foremost, fellas, this machine just, it sucks. It's wobbly, it's whatever, it's cheap. The foot plate's garbage, okay? So if I was using it, let's put this all the way here. If I was using it normally, okay? It's like, it's just, it's really just, I don't know, it's okay, it's not the best. But even when I do that, when I pull myself up, the back of the machine comes off the ground. So it's meant for pencil neck geeks, okay? But I put this sucker right underneath my $3,000 power blocks, because watch this. Now if I transition my feet up underneath the blocks, look at that, booyah. Okay, here's down on the machine, here's the blocks. Now all of a sudden, I can get a bit wider too and hit those freaking voluptuous glutes. Okay, but now I'm horse cocked under the three, or the you know 175 pound a piece dumbbell, 350 pounds plus that, that's 400 pounds of anchorage. Okay, I can hit, uh, you know, back extensions obviously, or I can hit, because of the angle, I can hit like glute ham raises as well. And that feels so much better. And now if I take this sucker right here, boys, 
and I put this right here, now I can make this thing incredibly comfortable, the Cadillac of back extension machines. And once again, it changes up my, uh, my leverages even a little bit more. And uh, it's, just, it's just ways to finagle things. I can get a tad bit deeper too, so now I can get really deep because the machine's a tad bit higher. And it doesn't grind into your Johnson, you know. <clears throat> and fellas, I said huge advocate for these back extension machines. I made a video about this on my Patreon. If you guys didn't know I have one, you're damn right I have one. I think I have like, uh, I think I have like uh, 300 videos or something on there. You know, just shit tons of material. Is it all gold? Eh. At the time, I certainly thought it was, but there's a lot of material on there. Okay, even material from 2017, when I was obsessed with the Bulgarian-esque style specialization. I was gonna write a book about it at the time, but I was like, whatever, that's whatever. So I just wrote some shit and I just threw it on a Patreon. That was like the first stuff I uploaded. <clears throat> that's classic, okay? Then I got rid of it for a couple of years and I brought it back. It's just, you know, it's a lot of shit. But anyways, I made a video about uh, the 90 degree back extension. I think that's absolute money, okay? I'm not gonna get into it too much because I didn't want to keep lifting. But uh, anyways, a lot of like the Russian power lifters and Olympic lifters like use that 90 degree back extension with like a light bar on their back. Okay, the, it's just like there's zero tension and there's peak tension. It's almost like a kettlebell swing, just way more badass. Whereas this 45 degree, it's a little bit different. There's like a, there's like peak tension and then like less tension at the top. You know what I mean? Because of the angle. So there's just two different beasts, you know? So I think if you want to just horse cock strong hamstrings, you probably use both of them. Back, 90 degree back extension, 45 degree back extension. And people say, well, Suki Ricky, aren't deadlifts just better than back extensions? And I would think the same thing. And I think that's probably why I dropped them in the first place many years ago, because I used to be obsessed with them. I used to do them when I was a kid because my brother discovered Charles Poliquin. And one way or another, he's like, oh, hyper, we've got to start doing hyper extensions. And we, so we started doing those. And I felt like my hamstrings were going to rip off the bone because I was a little pencil neck back then, you know, string bean. But I just did those for, you know, from when I was 11 until 22 or something. No, actually 20, 27 maybe, a long time. And I think it's probably a big reason why I never had a back injury before. It was just those back extensions, fellas. They just make your back freaking bulletproof. And um, I think there was some study. I just saw something recently because now I'm a, I'm a geek with the back extensions guy. I'm just always researching shit now. And it's like the back extension on one of those studies where they put the muscle activation electrodes on or whatever. They had like higher activation in the hamstrings from back extensions than from uh, – RDLs, and we all know RDLs are an amazing exercise. So uh, I think it was like an old T Nation article or something. So whatever, take it for what it's worth, but I'm just like, fellas. Listen, I did back extensions yesterday. I did some weighted ones. I did some body weight ones. And my hamstrings are freaking sore as, you know, sore as an eagle, like a soaring eagle, you know? So freaking sore right now that I wanted to deadlift to get them on a horse cock PRs. But I don't even know if I'll be able to because I'm so sore right now. Uh, and then I just was messing around with those today again, and my hamstrings are like freaking stiff as a brick. You know what I'm saying? So who knows if I'm going to be able to uh, horse cock max loads. I think I can actually just put the dip right here. I am right on the edge. What the frick, man. I'm going to hit my head on this shit, though. Oh, you're driving me insane. How is this going to hit... What the frick? Fellas, holy bucket. Okay, never mind. Actually, no, I got this. Oh, man. This garage. Fellas, you wanted the rat's nest? You got the rat's nest. You know how messy it is in here? This is exactly the freaking rat's nest 2.0. Okay, look at this. There's just no room for anything already. Just clutter. It's a little bit better than the rat's nest was, but it's just freaking, it's like, I can't get to any of this. This bench right here, can't get to it. Um, that bike, I bet your ass I'm not using that. That bench machine, oh my God. Those specialty bars back there, that hip thrust, that deadlift machine, I can't get to any of that. Sandbags covered in just insane amounts of cat fur. Can't get to it. Actually, I can't get to it. It's just absolutely disgusting. Um, where, where are we at? What is this? 
Oh my god. Oh. I really should get some dips in. I feel like I'm killing your guys' intensity right now. I know my intensity. Once I turn the McLeod on though, I feel like it's gonna be balls to the wall again. Um, let me just see, I feel like I missed some of you guys here. Can you see, oh, Tiago, wow. Tiago V with the two English pounds. That's another cup of Colt Folgers. Instant. That's actually, it's not even a cup, I keep saying a cup, I'm sorry fellas. That's another 100 cups of Folgers Instant Crystals. Okay. I feel like I'm gonna strip. What I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna do it, guys. I've been complaining about. It. I'm just gonna do. It. I'm gonna strip this. I'm gonna strip this sucker. You can watch me strip the weights, okay? You can watch me strip this. I feel like I should crank some tunes. We're gonna put the dips right here. Now, you know, I'm a little offended by someone when I was telling you guys about that Lane Norton story. Someone's like, who cares about a follow back? Listen, I don't give a shit about a follow back if you don't know about it, somebody. But if you talk to somebody, you meet them on a personal level, and then you, you know, you see that. And I'm sure, because obviously I have the check mark, so he sees I follow him, and he doesn't. I mean, that's kind of a, uh, if you had a friend that you followed and they didn't follow you back, you'd be like, what the fuck, dude? Isn't that kind of weird? I just think that's kind of weird. I feel like it's a very narcissistic thing. But uh, again, I don't care. I'm just bringing it up to you. And I feel like for whoever said who cares about a follow back, I mean, I just think socially it's kind of a weird thing. Oh, I only follow people that, uh, you know what I mean, are influ super influential in the world of nutrition. Ugh. You know what I'm saying, fellas? Ugh. Again, if you know them personally, now, if you don't know them, I agree with you. If it's just a random person, of course not. I know, um, I know some people personally that I know. And one person's like, hey, man, like, why I follow you? Why don't you follow me back? And they're like friends. And I guess like, oh, I don't know. I just, I just, I don't do that. So like, you don't do that. What a fucking weirdo. What a weirdo you are. That's why I bring it. It's just such a weird thing. Anyways, like, it, it's like the people that, like, uh, on social media that, like, don't follow anyone. It's like, you can follow me, but I'll not, I won't follow anyone. 
It's like, what? It's just extremely douche behavior. Because there's a feel like there's a few people in the world of entertainment that are like that. I don't follow anyone. Again, I don't say I'm not saying like, hey, follow them if they follow you. Because it's like if you don't know people, whatever. I'm saying if you know them in the re if you know them in real life, it doesn't make any sense to me. Ugh. See? Oh, this is too easy. We gotta get some chains on, boys. Imagine if I didn't follow my wife, right? Imagine if I didn't follow her. How big of a douchebag would I be? So, honey, if I follow you, then it, you know I, I, I just don't even understand the uh, concept of that. All my life I have been right on the edge. I'm going crazy. And I know a lot of people are going to be offended by what I'm saying. But Eric, who cares, man? Again, it's just a talking point, fellas. And you guys do realize that everything I say on here, like I'm monitored. <laughs> Anything I say gets blown out of proportion. So people are like, you got to talk about so-and-so. It's like anything I say gets blown out of proportion. So I'm assuming there's going to be an article. Rick the Stick claims that douche behavior, they're going to spin it in a way where I'm a huge asshole. Because that's literally, that's the, uh, the world I'm in. It's all about headlines, fellas. Easy headlines. Let's start with a 25, huh? Nice and easy. All my life I have been. Two. Probably gonna get a better angle for you guys. Ugh. Probably, you know, I have a bungee cord propelling me up for each rep. Cheating my reps, faking it so that. I don't know, but people do that. Fake plates. More fake plates. More dates. Athlean X fake plate scandal. Now anyone that has standard black plates is screwed. That guy screwed the pooch, I tell you. Now I can't even use these plates because people think they're fake. These plates are actually even heavier. These are like 46 or 47. You know what I mean? This is a heavy ass plate. But I can't use them because Athlean X ruined it for everyone by using his fake black plates. <sighs> but I can't. I have to. A tutorial on how to deadlift with fake plates. <laughs> what is. All oh, my life I have been right on the edge. What do they call that? Is that little dick energy? Well, if I gotta do a tutorial on how to deadlift, it's gotta be at least do 500 pounds. Holy buckets. Athlean X who weighs 140 pounds, ripped and peeled, reps 500 with ease, triple body weight for a demonstrational video. <sighs> yes, there we go. Oh, that's, that's good view. Yep. Ooh, I love dips. I don't under, I mean, I'm so fortunate that I'm not the people that like feel like their chest is going to tear when they do dips. I never understood that because they always feel great for me, but that seems like a very common thing that people say, oh my God, I can't do dips. Like my... I feel like my sternum's gonna explode. I've been doing dips since I was 11. I feel like I'm way stronger with dips than I am with bench press. And it makes sense probably because I didn't learn how to properly bench. Because remember, you only learned how to lift back in the day from like books, Gold's Gym books of bodybuilders that have no idea how they're lifting either with their fake Ivanko plates on the bar. That's another thing too. <clears throat> this 
classic bodybuilder photo session where it's uh, whoever just ripped and peeled with like 11 plates, 11 brand new Evaco plates on them. You know what I mean? Their jorts on. And then the kids, oh my God. He's the strongest man in the world. I remember looking at those books when I was a kid. And it's like, how the frick do these guys squat 22 plates? I can't even squat one at the time, you know what I mean? And then little do I know that they're all Johnny One Plates themselves, the bodybuilders. Most of those bodybuilders guys are extremely weak. Which doesn't, I don't know why, it doesn't have to be that way. You think they're on so many anabolics, they shouldn't be so weak, but. That's the thing guys, most people don't know how to train. They don't train, they train for the pump, they've never trained for strength. They don't know how to horse cock weights. They don't have the mindset. And then, there we go, that's a good angle. That's good. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh. All my life I have been right on the edge. I feel like I probably should check the chat. I'm going to try so many comments, which is great. Keep them coming, fellas, because Lord knows I can only be so entertaining for you guys when I'm doing 45-pound dips with zero tunes cranking. You know what I'm saying? Whew. Okay. All right. It's getting musty in here, fellas. What do we got here? Talk about, talk about from Juji's channel. Was he a psycho? What? Uh, talk about from Juji's channel. Bronze Soul, five bucks. Thanks for the golden tidbits. God dang, go get him stick. All right, well, I got to answer Underscore, that's his name, just underscore. Talk about it. Was he a psycho? Uh, no, I think he's just a great, he's just a really, really nice guy. Super nice, very genuine guy. So, some people are very fake, you know? They seem super nice and you meet them, they're just huge douchebags. Uh, he's like, he's, he's, a, he's an example of you get what you see, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, he seems like a really fun, lovable guy. That's exactly what he was. Like the first time I ever met him, 2017, I'm escaping from Hurricane Irma. You know what I'm saying? I'm driving there in my like, Honda Fit with the dog and the cat in the car. When I pull up there, I have no idea what to expect, right? He's like, oh, man, he gives me a big hug and stuff. Just like, and it could be weird, but when you're just like a really genuine, personal guy, I'm like, oh, man, this guy's great. Super easy to get along with, super easy to talk to. You know, he seems like a great guy. Doesn't seem like an asshole, you know what I mean? Like, so how can you not like a guy like that? You know what I mean? So somebody like that deserves like the success they have, you know. And you have asshole people that you know cheat on their partners and talk shit about everyone behind their back, and plenty of those people. Plenty of people like that in the world. <sighs> Too many, more so than the good ones. You know what I mean? More selfish, pompous. Um, 65 pounds. All right. But yeah, I'm surrounded by a lot of good people. But I mean, it's because I'm kind of keep to myself, you know what I mean? Like everyone's like, oh, you gotta collab. And I don't, I don't really collab with people. I don't really like new people and, or, not that I don't like them, but I've just been around so many people and a lot of times they're just huge douchebags. So what's the point? You know what I mean? I got a great community here. I got a small circle of all great people. I got an awesome wife. I got a great daughter, you know? Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm a very fortunate man. But don't worry, fellas. I'm gonna crank the tunes. We're gonna get intense here in a bit. Okay, I just gotta warm up. Don't wanna tear anything, you know? 
That'd be a terrible start to my live streaming career. Fourth workout, torn pectoralis. Search! You got an ass to grass, squat to the ground, you got to load up, like, let's see, what would it be? Three or four, 135, um, yeah, 135, 180, that's horse cocking some weight at the gym now. It's way easier to do that when you're in the, your own home where you have your dumbbells, you got your system, how you do it. At the gym though, it's just like, you got this shitty dip station, slippery, smooth, Hoist machine handles. Hoist, what a terrible brand that is. Those machines do the work for you, you know? Wow, he means talk about Tom. Here's, here's an extra $2. Talk about Tom. Tom, listen, I don't know any of the drama, the stuff that went down between all them, but I know that Tom, to me, was an awesome guy. And I think he was, uh, I think he's the one that kind of convinced Juji to do shit with me in the first place. So Juji told me that Tom like loved me, and loved my, you know, obviously my YouTube or whatever. Um, and me and Tom kicked it off really well, you know. Obviously, like, we had a lot of fun. Uh, he came over to the Rat's Nest one time, I think when he was like in town for the Olympia or something, like three years ago, and we sucked down a lot of horny goat weed and did some cool shit. The Arthur Saxon lift, right? I mean. I was sad about what happened with Tom, obviously, because I, I like Tom. He seems like a good guy. And I'm sure he is a good guy. I don't know. Maybe he just has, uh, I, don't know, I don't know the whole deal. With the guy. I don't, again, I don't really know the drama. I don't really know that. All I know is like gambling or something, but it's an addiction, and addiction can ruin the best of people, you know? So, like, people addicted to pain pills and all that shit, does that make them terrible people? No, it's just like, it's easy to do if you uh, say you have a surgery or something, you get hooked on like Percocet or Axie or something like that. Any, it can happen to anyone, you know. It's just, uh, it's just you got to be careful, and uh, it can turn great people into into really selfish, terrible people. But that's more of an that's the addiction, and that's with anything, you know. So it's a disease. But I, I mean, speaking of him personally, the time I had with him, it was great. Super nice, super funny guy. Whew! 75, that's only a 10 pound bump. I'm going, I'm really doing some small bumps here, fellas. <clears throat> Sweet! Three people still tuned in saying, Rick the stick, it's not boring. Get an engorged triceps pump. Talk about life. Hmm. Oh, I'm parched. <sighs> Fellas, what time is it? Oh, it's gotta be what? It's gotta be it's gotta be 4 30, maybe. I can't read the comments. Shit. Oh. Oh. Okay. We'll keep it rolling, fellas. The family left. Nick, you can say hi. I feel like an asshole of a dad. 
but uh, she'll be back. Whew, they understand, I think. Dad's got to get engorged in a rotund, you know? Oh, sloppy, sweaty. I feel like we should start cranking some tunes. Maybe turn up the intensity a little bit. I also need to get a better setup to put the weights on now. You got uh, 75, what, 80? No, it's probably about 95. 95.
I feel like I might need a loading pin. If I do the loading pin, that might be a better way to go. Because then you go 45, 45, 45. Right now, I, just, I don't have the time for this horse crap. I'm getting tired, I'm getting hungry, I'm getting dehydrated. Let's put some freaking uh, disco cum tutti in. Let's see if this. Let's see if this picks up the adrenaline. The music's been on for so long, this, this freaking Bluetooth shut off. Here we go now. Whew. How to protect your house. Come on, baby. To burn into an affordable, subscription-free, and resilient... Tell me that was a brilliant. That was like way better than a loading pen. That is freaking unbelievable, game changer, revolutionary. If I come out with stuff, that's gotta be the thing. It's gotta be the freaking shovel-handed, scooper, plate-loaded dip contraption, you know? Easy. And look at how big it is, fellas. You can easily put 500 pounds on there.
Or even surf the outdoor beach. Switch to Chrome for a better browsing experience. Here we go now. Here we go now. Uh-oh. Better not be royalty. Okay, I think this one's good. Boys, you got trapped in the belt. The freaking thing got stuck in the other snap clip. I feel like I can't get it off. Oh, an idiot. Dumb meathead. Dumb meathead. Thank you. 
Respect. Call there, boy. I haven't done dips in a while like that heavy. 160. Or should I go up to 180? 180. We're we'll stopping at 160 for two. Or go down for reps. So what are you thinking here? What are we thinking here, fellas? Let's check it. I can't read it here. No, uh, dips for reps. 200 or bust. A lot of 180s. All right, four plates. Let's go four plates. We'll just go four plates and we'll drop down for reps. How does that sound? Let's get the best of both worlds. Still only two more sets. This Avi 7, gonna give you a big congratulations there, brother. Avi 47, asked if I tried horse cock and dips with the chains around the neck. And uh, yeah, that's all for show, brother. How many chains can you put around your neck? Like, you only do that when you're not moving a lot of weight, you know what I'm saying? But actually, I have horse cock uh, 120 pounds of chains around me. But uh, most people are putting like a 15 pound chain around their neck when they're doing this. Trying to feel hardcore. You want to be hardcore, strap 200 pounds on your freaking nut sack and dip that. That's hardcore. The chains are all for show. That's like, that's like magazine photo shoot. Like, oh my God, I can't believe you dip a chain. That must weigh 10 pounds. Oh yeah, rip the pin. Ah, oh, brother, you're right. That's actually. Well, you could do a drop. You could do a nasty drop set with this. But mushroom eight is said to rip the pin out of this shovel-headed sucker for an incredible drop set. Also, you're a demigod, unlike me. You're the fourth man to ever earn our respect. Oh wow, only the fourth man from mushroom tip uh, eight. Badass, brother. Thank you. But uh, yeah, I think I'll, let's do a horse cock drop set. How about that? It's gonna be an easier drop. That's gonna end up being like the, any normal drop set. I think mushroom tip ape had it right to horse cock Max Sloan and then scoop the shovel headed sucker off straight into a drop set. I think that would have been better. Is your John Cleamer? Oh, I know John. Ask me if I'm familiar with it. I don't even know who that is, so clearly I'm not, but I'll let me look more into that. Give me a second. Shit. 
John Meeky Thor, Rock and Muscles. Never heard of that. Rock and Muscles. Sounds badass. Rock and Muscles. All right, fellas. Let's ask the chat. I mean, that was pretty easy, boys. Should I stop at 180? I mean, I don't want to get ahead of myself. We're just having a good time right now. You know what I mean? Or should I do like hammer curls? Should I do some hammer curls to finish up? You know? Go for the double. Hammer curls. Let's do the hammer curl. I think everyone enjoys some curls. Let's do some hammer curls. You know, we got the tries in. The tries were super sore before the pressing today from two days ago. I went full ham bone. Did set some hundreds at crunch shitness. Just hundreds of just the long rope. Just hundreds. Hundreds. Just screaming. Okay, good. Let's horse cock some weights here, huh? Ah, now, look at this. Look what I'm working with here, boys. There's just no rules. This is my foot space right here, you know? You gotta have the grace of a ballerina not to tear your shit.
65s, 90s, but the, uh, the $3,000 power blocks, we got pairs up to 175 pounds. Well, you guys, when I do curls, I like to do, uh, I like to hammer it, right? And then supinate it. And then after I supinate it, I like to get some supinated, some Zotmans, some Zotmans. And then I like to uh, supinate on the inside and then finish with the hammer on the inside. Just the whole nasty biomechanical drop stuff. I've never done hammer curls with kettlebells. I don't have light enough kettlebells here. Actually, I do have one. Let me show you. I'll give you a really golden tidbit. I'm gonna give all my tidbits away on these streams. Check this sucker out. When you do a hammer throw, like this grip, holy buckets, holy buckets, Jesus, it's twice as hard as doing it with a dumbbell, it's obviously the leverage, fellas, you're going to feel that sucker so freaking much, so you don't need to go heavy with that. When I'm at the gym and they actually have the pairs of light ass kettlebells, which are a meme, because kettlebells should be freaking heavy for like powerful hip thrusts. But because it, gyms have such tiny, puny, pathetic kettlebells, I like to hammer curl them. And I like to do a rep as the other one comes up and you go dust. So just alternate them like that. So you have to hold this freaking load. 
an isometric hold at the top. Fellas, that freaking will light your forearms up. It's amazing, okay? It's amazing. I mean, why do curls with dumbbells when you can do that freaking sucker with these kettlebells and just get like twice the activation? You know what I'm saying? Get that freaking horse speed, you know? Horse cock these power blocks. Better shot, I don't money shot. garage for 190 minutes. Holy buckets. Avi, 40 
seven says fat grips plus the kettlebell curl. Are you saying the fat grips on the kettlebell? Because that would be devastating. All right, 95. Manipulate the freaking CNX. Oh, exhausting. So the 95 pound hammer curls were like, you know, they're pretty freaking heavy, I'm not gonna lie, especially with those computer blocks. But then I dropped it down to the 50s, which normally 50 pound dumbbells, you know, now they sneeze at and they just feel like air. You know what I'm saying? So those drops, it's like, if there's ever a way to reason to do them, it's because you just, you horse cock, max loads, you strip freaking, you know, 50% or so, and you're like, holy buckets, you know? Like new levels of strength, untapped. That's what it's all about, fellas. That's why those eccentric hooks are cool, because you're freaking horse cocking, 547 pounds or whatever. Holy book, it's just locked in. Drop, just blow your load. You know what I'm saying? Whew. Fellas, I'm absolutely cooked. And I feel bad because my daughter got home from school at like three something. And it's now 447. She's at dance for hours. You know, old man stick del hogging, screaming, going crazy, dancing with the boys. Losing his mind, you know, it's okay though. That's what it's all about, fellas. But, uh, you know, as I always say, I appreciate you, fellas. It's a hell of a freaking stream we had here today. I told my wife it was gonna be a quick one. I said, Listen, I don't need much time, give me an hour. I'll tell the fellas we're gonna wrap this up, you know. That's why I started the stream with 315 on the bar and then the hooks with the freaking starting the stream off hot with 405 pounds. Because I said, listen, all I need is an hour. I don't need much time, honey. Give me one freaking hour. That's all I'm asking. And that was uh, 100. And, uh, well, the stream, 100, 136 minutes ago. I'm cooked. The truck has been cooked. Okay. Uh, 
I'm gonna eat some food. I'm gonna drink some water. I wanna jump in the hot tub. The problem is, uh, I don't know if you guys remember or if you were here when I told you or not. I was really infatuated with the hot tub. Tub talks, the advantages, the beneficial perks of sitting in the tub. You know, because everyone's talking about the freaking ice baths. You know, that's like a huge sensation. Ice baths. And I'm like, screw that. A hot tub, that's much better. You know, it's got its benefits. You don't know, look it up. I can talk about it, but I don't want to. I don't want to get into it. Um, so I was heating that sucker like every day. And then uh, one day, I think it was Wednesday. It was last week, Wednesday. I heated the tub and then I turned the tub off. So I switched the valves, but I didn't turn the heater off. So the heater heated my pool, which is like, I don't know, what is it? Like a, what's a pool? A thousand gallons or something versus a tub, which is like a fraction of it. Heated the entire pool Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So three days of keeping the, the pool at 104 degrees. So then they say, they say, oh, always make sure you turn it off because that propane will cost a fortune if you heat your pool or whatever. So I did that. So I soaked up the hot tub pool. The pool was a hot tub for like a day. And uh, then it was a nice warm pool for like two days. And now it's back to normal. And I want to freaking get in the tub, but I'm just trying not to destroy that gas bill. You know what I mean? So I think it's time though. I think I gave it enough days where it's like, I think I did my part. I'm letting that utility bill, that gas bill kind of, you know, I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be hefty, but listen, I can't avoid the tub forever. Right now, we want to get in the tub, get the joints feeling loose as a goose as I suck on a beverage. Um, and not like an alcoholic beverage. I don't, I never do that. I don't, you know what I mean? Like people, somebody was like, oh, what's your thoughts on Coors Light? I'm like, what the frick do you mean? I'm like, oh, well, Lane Norton says you can drink Coors Light and make gains. It's like, bullshit. You can't drink. No alcohol is going to make gains. I would say that maybe you can drink it and like, you know, maintain, but you freaking, you know, it's poisoned your body basically. There's no way you're going to be like waking up stronger and bigger. The only people that I know that like the power lifters and stuff that like one guy I used to work for, he's like, Oh, I used to have a 600 pound bench and he was like hefty, huge gut and stuff. So I believe it, right? Super overweight. He's like, I just, back in my day, we just ain't ate steak and beer every day. And it's like, all right, well, I mean, I highly doubt the beer is what made you strong, but I don't know. I mean, listen, I'm not a freaking expert. I don't claim to be an expert. All I know is I used to drink a lot back in my day and I always felt like horse shit the next day. So much so that I usually skipped the gym and I felt sick so much so that I just never ate because I had to like detox that entire day. I had to like detox, like not eat and just wanted to sleep all day. That's how I felt. I never felt like, holy buckets, I'm just gonna hit some PRs today. I had, you know, 18 cores light last night. I don't know, but maybe you guys probably know more than me. So let me know, leave some comments. Is anyone, is anyone here like a nutritional science expert? And they actually say, well, Sticky Ricky, actually anecdotal data suggests that Coors Light in fact boosts anabolism, right? Does anyone have that research? I'm waiting for the uh, opinions here, fellas. Just waiting for some opinions. Let's let these uh, responses accumulate. Anyone? Anyone got their responses to this question here? What do we got, boys? Alcohol is just absolutely unnecessary in every facet, okay? Bro, we don't know more than you. You're absolute horse. Beer is bad. Beer consumption boosts bladder gains. Yeah, didn't Olympic athletes get hammered back in the day? Well, I think the only thing about the drinking was that it like hydrates you quicker because it has like minerals and shit in it. But I feel like that could that would still be inferior to having like a electrolyte packet added to your water. So I will say this, fellas, that when um, I cut a ton of weight, when I cut a ton of weight in college, like 30 pounds to make 184 weight class, I felt like absolute death after just, you know, emaciated, dehydrated, felt like death. 
And then one day, um, like the medical trainer was like, oh, you know, here. They're like, I don't know, I don't know. I can't remember how I found it. I found like these, it was like just an electrolyte packet. It was made by Gatorade, but it wasn't like sugar. It wasn't dextrose. It was no flavoring. It was literally just sodium, magnesium, potassium. Um, and you, you would just put it, you know, mix it in some water. And it just tasted like just, just a shit ton of salt. It was cr- like sh- the saltiest thing I've ever tasted in my life. And uh, I will say it like instantly made me feel better though. Like I couldn't believe how much better I felt. So like the electrolytes, like when you're super dehydrated, yes, that makes a difference. So I feel like marathon runners or whatever, if they're like depleted and dehydrated, yeah, sucking down beers, probably like, oh, I gotta suck these beers down to get replenished and hydrate. It's like, that might help a little bit, but you could also just suck down this freaking salt packet and you'll probably feel 10 times better you know what I mean? That's just my opinion. Again, I'm no expert. I'm just, you know, I'm 35. I've seen people say, oh, Sticky Ricky's 36. I'm 35, not 36. All right, a lot of shit on the internet's inaccurate. It's wrong, okay? Tons of shit on the internet's wrong. Um, so I've been, you know, I've been freaking lifting for t- almost 25 years. And I was an athlete for Fifteen? No, I mean, I guess you could consider what I did athletic in the side of it. You know what I mean? Like I've done all this shit, so I just can speak from my experience. I'm not a scientific geek that reads. Well, actually, I do. I do like to read PubMed stuff when I'm curious about it. But I don't scroll through the research and the journals to just discover new shit that I don't care about. You know what I mean? I will do that when it comes to like back extensions, garlic. That kind of stuff. I'll look for that maple syrup. Uh, I'll look for that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Um, that, that brings up another point I want to ask you guys. There's a lot of people in the chat right now. It's a good chat. You know, not, it's not a record. I've had over a thousand freaking corpses watching the deadlift PR. But since we're just chit-chatting, this ain't a bad number. You know, individuals sitting looking at their freaking screen on a Friday night. Right? It's Friday, right? Yes, it's Friday. Isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, I looked at horse mass gainer. Horse mass gainer meant for horses. Because I was just curious. Because it's, it's actually like a real thing. And it's like very common for, hor- I, you know, it's a lot of emaciated horses and shit. Horse weight gainer. A lot of abused, neglected horses that are just like on death's door. And there's horse gainers for them. And then there's obviously like the horse gainers for trying to put muscle on horses. And usually it's just like, I don't know the exact ingredients. It's just obviously lots of vitamins and minerals and oils and shit. But there's, oh, that's, I just remembered. I knew I was going to remember. A lot of them have gamma oraisinol, gamma oraisinol or some shit like that. I'm sure some of you guys know what it is. It's like a wheat brand or it's like a brand extract or something gamma orizonol o r like y z a n o l something like that and it struck a chord with me because i worked at gnc 15 years ago 15 years ago i worked at gnc with the freaking dress shirt and the tie looking like a real professional meathead idiot selling freaking USP labs. You know what I'm talking about? Selling freaking muscle tech. Oh yeah, your boy wants to gain some weight. Yeah, take the uh, muscle tech uh, mass gainer. Take it with the uh, Gaspari freaking, um, can't even remember what all the, size on, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Obviously, there was the optimum nutrition was big. I mean, still is the BSN, whatever. That's not even the point. It's just funny thinking about those supplement sales days, GNC. But they you got commission, and you can see you got only got commission on certain items. So they wanted you to sell the GNC stuff, but you didn't get commission on GNC items. So why the frick would you sell the GNC stuff? They wanted you to sell the fish oil chews. You know what I mean? You got uh, you got like brownie points for selling. Like, oh yeah, regional sales is really. You're killing it, man. You're selling a lot of the BOGO fish oil packets and the acai chews. You gotta sell the men, the mega men's multivitamin. 
but you didn't you didn't make money off that stuff. You made money off the freaking muscle tech, the USP labs, Gaspari. That's the stuff you made money on. You know what I mean? So that's what you wanted to sell. The hydroxy cut, right? That was the big one. Oh, you get the mega, the mega dose hydroxy, the 180 capsules. You got like twenty dollars a commission or something on those. <clears throat> um, but anyways, one of the supplements there that like nobody bought and it was super expensive was like gamma orizinol, gamma orizinol, and it was sold as like a test booster, right? But it's just like just like rice bran extract. So it's pretty funny that I don't. Th so basically, like I don't think anyone ever bought this stuff. One time, I think I think one time. Dude, the supplement was like $120 or something for like rice bran extract. And it was like, oh, 1,200% testosterone boost or some bullshit like that. Rice bran extract, okay? <laughs> Vitamin E from the rice bran. I don't even know what the concept or the theory behind it was. Uh, one time though, this like his high school kid came in with his friend. And they were like looking at this and they were looking, they're seeing how expensive it was. And I was like, oh my God, this has to be the holy grail of supplements. So his friend's like, oh man, you got to get it, man. And, the, and he's like, oh, I'm so excited to see what happens to you. And they were just like so pumped. And uh, I mean, I certainly wasn't going to stop him because there's probably like $18 a commission for me. You know what I mean? But looking back, I mean, for all I know, that kid got freaking jacked as a racehorse because all the horse supplements contain gamma orizinol or whatever. Um, so I looked up like PubMed, I looked up the research of it and, uh, and it's, it's, there's a lot of stuff I found, it's funny because this is like a horse supplement. So obviously in these horse races, like doping is a huge thing, right? So one person, I think it was like, I don't know if it was one case or it was multiple, I think it was one case. This guy's horse fails for uh, like equipoise, a horse steroid, and uh, he blames it on the gamma orizinol or whatever. Like it's converted to this steroid in the horse's body or something like that. And uh, there was like nothing else about it. So this guy like got, his horse got a pass. But that doesn't make any sense because this is like, this is a supplement that's, or it's a, it's like a nutrient found in like rice bran or something. So how would it convert? You know what I'm saying? Like it just doesn't make any sense. Like it's just total BS bro science that somehow this guy must have been a very prestigious political figure to have his horse, you know what I mean? Like not get banned or something because of that. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So I looked up more stuff though on the PubMed about it and they did like research and it's like, oh, it's, um, it proved to, uh, Increase like muscle strength or something like that. So I don't know if I mean there's maybe there's something to this gamma raisin all but like they don't sell it really anywhere I only could find it on like Amazon and it's like dirt cheap, too So it's just I don't know. It's an interesting sell. You don't see it anywhere But now that I'm bringing it up someone's gonna freaking like oh, is that right? Oh my god, they're gonna freaking market it. It's gonna be the next Turkesterone or whatever the frick it's called Guarantee it just watch, you know frick. I just spilled the beans but um has anyone ever heard of that supplement or taken that supplement before? Let's, let's check out the chat. Anybody? Anyone taking the Gamma O? It's an antioxidant. Okay. So it's an antioxidant. That's all somebody said about it. Later that kid became Phil Heath. From his rice bran extract. Uh, brother. A lot of people are saying, what the F is he rambling about? Brother, you weren't listening to the story. I think it's very clear what I was rambling about. I was talking about my time in GNC and then a, a freaking snake oil gamma O supplement. All right, here's another one. It says uh, Viva El Pibe. Pibe. Gamma orizinol belongs to the group of antioxidants, which means that it removes oxygen. Yeah, obviously, that's a root. Okay. 
Rice bran with 3% milk is the mass gainer shake of the elite. All right, sounds like not many people know about it. It's just an antioxidant. All righty, okay. Anyways, fellas, I'm cooked. Like literally, I'm cooking in the garage. Um, something else I wanna bring up to you guys is, is it worth, sh sh it's frozen. All right, is it worth trying to like insulate this garage door? It feels like a furnace. I'm telling you because on the outside, it's like a dark color. So it's just sucking up all the heat from the sun and it makes this garage just boiling. Even if it's not that hot out, the garage is 10 times as hot because it's sucking up the radiation from the sun, just shooting it inside here like a furnace. So I'm wondering if I should insulate it because then also the room would be more soundproof too. I think if there's a nice freaking stout insulated garage door. And if that's the case, Scream, Kevin McLeod, you know, less heat radiation blasting through the freaking uh, layers. You know what I'm talking about? Is that worth doing, fellas? Because it's probably going to cost a fortune. All right. Insulation doesn't soundproof. All right. So that would be a waste of time and a waste of money. Drill a hole for the AC. All right. Somebody's right. Listen, fellas, let me say this, though. A lot of people are saying the garage is a sauna. Does that mean that you're getting the benefits of a sauna lifting in the garage? Because the sauna has vast benefits for health, detoxification, heat shock proteins, which I don't really understand what they are fully yet, huge boosts in growth hormone, apparently. Like, all this, you know, the, like the sauna is like, lengthens your life. Hence why there's like, what is it like? Uh, it's like there's a place called Perspiration close to me. It's literally just like a membership to go in saunas with like purple lights and pink lights and blue lights, light color therapy and like heat. You know what I'm saying? So I could freaking put a purple light bulb in here, have this heat, and would I like, you know, just uh, mutate? What would happen? Box fan. Enjoy the heat when it's there. Growth lights, is that a real thing? Oh, fellas, about the lights. Is that a real thing? I'm curious. Because when I was in college, I think a phenomenon was sunning your testicles. And then later on, like I think recently, it's like sunning your asshole now. But I think in, when I was in college, it was sunning your testicles. And supposedly that like, quadrupled your testosterone or some shit. And of course, I'm not gonna sit outside with my balls hanging, you know, spread eagle, right? There's not many places, you get what I'm saying? So I bought this tiny little light that apparently shot out whatever like radiation or something and you would just put it under your nuts. Or that's what I did at least. And uh, I don't think it did anything. I just felt like a weirdo just holding a light between my legs with my nuts hanging. You get what I'm saying? That's so. I'm curious though, because they do make these lights with these different sorts of radiation, like good radiation apparently. So I'm curious, do they indeed sell like garage lights that just, you, you know, you spread your legs with your nuts hanging out and you're just freaking become the Hulk. You know what I mean? Is that a real thing, boys? Let's find out. Uh, this is equestrian enthusiast. I experienced no notable gains from sunning my balls. That's funny. That's funny that other people have tried, huh? I mean, that was like a that was a like a real phenomenon. Sun the testicles, and it's like, well, shit. I've never thought about that before. Yeah, we always got to wear undies and pants. Like that's right. Our nuts need to get blasted with radiation. Oh, EG4 mini split with a few solar panels and never pay for AC, okay. Hulk balls, balls caught fire. Glute spread, <laughs> just live stream. Nuts and assholes and spreading glutes and, listen, it's not, it's not, it's incredibly heterosexual, okay? It's, he it's extremely heterosexual because we're all gonna learn, it's gonna be anecdotal data 
what happens to the boys when they hit the glute spread pre-workout? Like, there's nothing questionable about that. It's for science, you know what I'm saying? We're all just trying to make gains at the end of the day. Nothing weird about that. Oh, yeah, that's, it's funny. Somebody said, if it's educational, it's fine by YouTube, YouTube standards. And it's funny though, God, I saw something on YouTube where, what is it? It was like, how the frick is this on, but it was like an educational thing. So I don't know what it was like. Um, can't for the life of me remember what it was. But some dude had this like ding dong hanging out. And it's like, how the f how is this not like taken down from YouTube? But because it's for educational purposes. Maybe like a testicular exam or something like that. I don't know. But it's true. I mean, if it's for if it's for education, then we could rear glute spreads, you know, tilt the shaft up, nuts hanging down, spread eagle on the bench, and then hit the go for the PR after and see if it indeed happens. Like that sounds pretty goddamn educational and experimental to me. I mean, has anyone done that before? Has anyone documented that before? <sighs> okay, very heterosexual. Guys, I'm getting freaking emaciated, dehydrated. Um, can't you see that I am right on the edge? Dude, I want to just say something real fast. Singing, dancing, muscle man. This guy, he's always commenting for the algorithm. And he's uh, probably the, the VIP, not the, the, the MVP. He's leaving eight comments every single video. You know, having conversations with himself. Okay, that guy is committed to helping this channel get boosted on the algorithm. You know, so much love singing, dancing, muscle man, huge fan of you, you know? And you're always asking to see like my five rep max for Turkish get-ups, which that's gonna be a tough one to do in the garage with putrid cat piss and fur balls everywhere, hitting a five rep max, laying in fur, nasty fur balls, just, uh, you know, inhaling cat litter. Whew, I'm getting freaking tired and exhausted, boys. I think I'm gonna call it. I appreciate you guys for tuning in, as always. We had a good time. We had a, a Nair video. The Nair video. Is that is that what it is? The Nair, is that a real thing? Someone's Nairing the, the hair off their testicles and it's totally okay. Monetized and all for YouTube. Just a thick engorged shaft with voluptuous nuts as he Nairs it. Anyways, fellas. It's been fun, it's been good. We hit some pretty freaking big weights today. 180 for three or four or something like that on the dips, that's not too bad at a bulbous body weight. You know, that's not bad at all. 445 plus 92, 537 pounds D low, or 537 pound eccentric bench dropped into the 445. Pretty good day, fellas. Hammer curls, even after all that, 159 minutes. Oh, brother, we're going on three hours right now. 160 minutes in three, two, one, boom. Three hour live stream, one sip of water the whole time, not a single tinkle. I want you to think about that dehydration, zero tinkle. I'm gonna be lethargic and exhausted tomorrow. Uh, let's get you guys, before I go, let me ask the chat one more comment. One more comment, fellas. I'm exhausted. I'm dehydrated. I'm having heat stroke right now. I'm cooked. I'm so cooked. Uh, I did legs yesterday. Pushing about 1,300 pounds on the leg press. I know it's an ego lift, but um, I need to do it because I want to strengthen my tendon. So I figure there's, I don't have to walk out heavy weight with a squat. Just horse cocking, just pushing his max loads on the, on the leg press. 1,300 pounds, roughly. And then I did a bunch of uh, glute ham raises back extensions, that good stuff, some calves after. Um, and then today was pressing. Tomorrow, I have a lot of time tomorrow. My daughter's becoming a hardcore dancer. 
So she's at dance for like eight hours. So I'm wondering, I got to stream for the boys, right? What should I stream tomorrow? Deadlifts again? Or do I do like croc rows? You know? Get nasty with croc rows. What do you think? Well, like what I mean, I don't want I don't want to be the one to suggest five rep max back hey, back extension. Bron Sol, he's doing arms tomorrow. Croc rows, cock rows. The cock rows for educational purposes could make full monetary value. Pull-ups, box jumps every day. Huh. Chains, crack rows, cardio. No, definitely not cardio. Cardio's dancing to the Kevin McLeod in between sets. Behind the back deadlift, interesting. Heavy zerchers. Huh. Kegels, tight, tight groin muscles. I don't have a strongman log, unfortunately. That's like the one thing I never bought. Uh, strongman, high pulls, crocs, military presses. Heavy rows, Turkish get-ups. Good Lord. I feel like there's just a million suggestions here, boys. All this muscular body. Oh, my God. Little foot, that's a very strange and homoerotic dream. But thank you for thinking of me. Blue fat grips rows. I kind of like that idea. Hey, how about croc rows? You know, and then after the croc rows... Going into the fat grips, thick dick handle rows. Fellas, I feel like the stream is starting to get like shoddy quality. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I don't want to rack. Oh, I thought I said rack poles. I haven't done those in forever. Oh, Jeffersons. I mean, there's a lot of fun stuff, fellas. Jeffersons, crack rows, ultraviolet radiation, cock rows. Um, fat grip RDLs. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. There's a lot of good shit. All right, boys. I'll sleep on it. How about that? There's too many suggestions. I'll sleep on it. Oh my God. I'm getting so cooked. I'm so dehydrated. I've had nothing today. You know, not even garbanzos and couscous. I'm freaking melting fellas. I am trying to lose like fat. But at this rate, I'm literally just becoming anorexic. You know what I mean? We'll see if I can stay succulent and dense. I feel like I'm withering away though. I just not, I don't eat boys. You know what I mean? I'm not eating these days. Before I used to suck down cinnamon raisin bagels all day, fig bars in the fanny pack, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Now it's like, you know, I was, the cho I was even stuffing chocolate chip cookies. Because they were 480 calories a piece. So I'm like, man, if I suck down three or four of these, that's 2,000 calories. Just easily snacks, you know? Oh, brother. Now I'm not eating anything. I'm getting a little, I'm just, I'm the most extreme person you'll ever meet in your life. When I decide to bulk, I bulk. You know what I mean? Fig bars, pitted dates, you know, sleeve of bagels, chocolate chip cookies. And then when I decided to try to cut some fat, I just, I go way too far and just don't eat anything all day. You know what I mean? Like I'm just, I'm one or the other. You know what I mean? When I wanted a nutritionally dense snack back in the day, it was instantly cat food. Have to eat cat food. You're talking pebbles of freaking salmon, blueberries, brown rice, whatever the frick's in there. The best of ingredients, blue diamond cat food, blue buffalo, whatever. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's my brain, okay? Um, so I gotta eat some food. I gotta drink some freaking water. I'm dying here, boys. Pizza. How about some pizza? Friday pizza? Bring it back to the TGIF Fridays. If you're my age, freaking Step by Step was on. Family Matters. You know, TGIF. TGIF. Then you get the freaking Domino's pizza. You watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Family Matters. Step by Step. You know what I'm talking about, boys? Has anyone experienced that? Those were the days. Okay. All right, boys. It's been a good one. Maybe the best one ever. I'm not going to lie. I was lethargic at the first. At the start, I turned down the Kevin McLeod, and we freaking, we, you know, exploded, erupted with intensity. It was honestly probably one of the best streams yet. 165 minutes, 166 minutes. Like, I don't know how we do it, but you guys – Freaking cooked in comments the whole time, just like this. Just never ending engagement. 
YouTube can suck a big fat one. They're gonna try to demonetize me, you know what I mean? The amount of freaking engagement I'm giving this platform is just disgusting, okay? They can suck a fat one. On that note, I will see you fellas tomorrow. Most definitely, it's just if I wanna stream between nine to one or four to eight, I think it is, something like that. I gotta sleep on it, fellas. I'm cooked. I'm, the truck is freaking cooked, okay? I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you have a swelling, freaking sweltering, hot, extreme, just delicious, delectable night. If you're gonna bulk, freaking get after it. Suck down the fig bars, the chocolate chip cookies. Get the blood sugar spiked. Get a voluptuous pump. If you're gonna cut, you know, suck down a cup of instant crystals from Folgers, kill the appetite, and get after it, you know. Thank you for all the hearts. The hearts are flying in. I'll always appreciate the hearts, the 100%, the freaking yes daddies, the fig suckers. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow.